Welcome everyone, namaste to Vinyasa Yoga Flow. Uh, you'll wanna have two yoga blocks and maybe a strap just in case. We're gonna continue with our physical theme of turning open the thighs of the hips, which is called external rotation and often called hip openers. So I invite you to find a comfortable way to bring the legs out in front of you and turn open your thighs in some version of cross-legged seat if that works with your body. And you might even find it helpful to elevate your pelvis on two blocks side by side or a cushion. And as you sit towards the front edge of it, play with how close together or how far apart it's comfortable for you to cross your shins. Rooting down evenly through left and right sitting bones, invite a tall spine, relaxed body. So I'd like to share a poem written by Dana Folds, and it goes along with what I was talking about in yesterday's yin yoga practice about cultivating natural presence to be able to neutrally witness the comings and goings of life everything that happens and that we can practice within the yoga physical postures noticing how the breath may shift how the sensations may come and go and how the thoughts and emotions come and go as well and this practice of opening ourselves up to allowing is called a parigraha which is a practice of the first limb of the eight limbs of yoga it's also translated often as non-attachment and i talked about yesterday how the root causes of suffering include raga which is where we're chasing after or clinging onto impermanent things that we think will bring us pleasure and the somewhat opposite or the flip side of that is another root cause of suffering which is dvesha and it's translated as aversion and that's resisting or pushing away constantly like going through excessive means to avoid what might be non-pleasant or unpleasant and so you can see how that can give us this emotional swing of push and pull that takes us off center out of feeling balanced and grounded so here's a prompt by dana folds here's her poem there is no controlling life Try coraling a lightning bolt containing a tornado. Dam a stream and it will create a new channel. Resist and the tide will sweep you off your feet. Allow and grace will carry you to higher ground. The only safety lies in letting it all in. The wild and the weak, fear, fantasies, failures, and success. When loss rips off the doors of the heart or sadness veils your vision with despair. Practice becomes simply bearing the truth. In the choice to let go of your known way of being, the whole world is revealed to your new eyes. In the choice to let go of your known way of being, the whole world is revealed to your eyes. Sitting with that for a moment, maybe resting a hand gently on your heart center. Noticing the sensations in your body. The sensations of the breath. Your energy. And observing a few moments, the activities of your mind. Bringing a kind, loving attention to what is in the present moment. Sense the energy of your heart, observing any emotions. And allow a deeper breath in, feeling the ground beneath your body. Exhaling through the lips, feeling the sky open high above. 
with deepening breaths, I invite you to call to heart something you appreciate right now. Part of the recognizing of the impermanence of what's around us is the ability to have a greater sense of gratitude, knowing that it's fleeting what's here now. And then bring your awareness to your intention. What are you inviting in to your experience through this practice? And to whom or what might you choose to dedicate your practice to today? Let's join our voices together, creating resonant space in support of each other by chanting OM three times. Inhale deeply. Slowing down the breath, let's begin to practice a breathing technique to invite calmness of mind and body and mental focus, present moment awareness. And that's ujjayi pranayama, or victorious breathing, where we close the lips, softly narrow the back of the throat, and listen to a very gentle whisper you're creating as you breathe in and out slowly and evenly through your nose. Take your time to feel and hear the fullness of each breath. Inviting a feeling tone of balance. And as you continue to listen to your breath, please make your way onto standing forward fold right at the front of your mat, separating your feet apart, hips distance, parallel, and bending your knees generously so that you can easily, without strain, relax the neck. And you might take hold of opposite elbows, maybe gently sway the spine and shake another head, or you might choose to interlace your fingers behind your lower back, opening the front of the shoulders as you stretch the arms forward. Stay here for a few deep breaths. Tilting your weight forward, allow your sitting bones to begin stacking right above your heels. You might choose to place blocks in front of your feet if the ground feels too low to press your fingertips onto. And as you press your hands down, firm in the belly and inhale as you lengthen your spine forward into half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Then exhale, bow towards your legs in Uttanasana. Pressing down through your feet, inhale, slowly rise to stand, raising your arms overhead as you roll your shoulders back and down in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, join your hands in prayer slowly from your crown to your heart center. Offering gratitude to the sun, let's begin our first series, Surya Namaskar C. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead again, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hinge forward, bowing over your legs. Plant your fingertips on the ground. Inhale, step your left knee behind you into Anjaneyasana, gazing up. As you hold your breath, step into plank, top of a push-up. Exhale, slowly lower your knees, chest, then chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale, slide forward onto the floor in cobra, rolling the shoulders back. 
Exhale, lift your pelvis up and back into downward facing duck. Inhale, step your left foot forward beside your left thumb and lower your right knee, gazing up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and bow. Pressing through your feet, inhale, slowly rise to the pace of your breath. Exhale, join your hands from crown to heart. One more time on the second side. Inhale, sweep your arms in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow towards the earth in Uttanasana. Plant your fingertips down. Inhale, step the right knee back, gazing up. As you hold your breath, step into plank. Exhale, Ashtangasana, lower knees, chest and chin. Inhale, Bhujangasana, slither forward and coil your chest up. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot beside right thumb, left knee down, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, step left foot forward and bow. Rooting down, inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands down to your center, heart center. Let's move on to Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, Ardva Hastasana, arms overhead. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. This time, press your fingertips down on blocks to the ground. Lengthen the spine as you inhale to Ardha Uttanasana. Step into plank, and this time, let's pause for a few breaths, cultivating a long, spacious spine. You can lower your knees to the ground if you need more support. Otherwise, press your inner heels back with legs actively straight. Shoulders right over the wrists. Knees on the ground just ahead of your thumbs. With a slow exhalation, glide forward as far as you can before bending your elbows 90 degrees, grazing your side ribs in Chaturanga Dandasana. Lower all the way to enter Cobra or flip the toes here to enter Upward Facing Dot. Breathing in. Exhale to downward facing duck. Let your body be still. Three deep breaths, steadying your gaze on one focal point. Relaxing the back of your neck, your jaw. When you've emptied the third breath, Walk or lightly jump to the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, press with your fingertips, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, press with your feet, rise up. Exhale, connect to your heart center. Let's move on to Sun Salutation B, Surya Namaskar B bringing the inner edges of your feet to touch so your big toes are together. Let's prepare for chair pose. We'll continue flowing with a breath. Empty this one. As you inhale, bend your knees together to touch. Sit back towards your heels, raising your arms in Utkatasana, chair pose. Then exhale, shift your weight forward and bow into Uttanasana. Press down with your fingertips. Inhale, lengthen to Ardha Uttanasana. Step into plank, and as you exhale, glide forward and lower through Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale either into Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale to Downward Facing Dog. Let's continue. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Exhale, softly step the foot forward beside your right thumb and spin your left heel down. Facing forward, inhale, rise up to warrior one. Exhale, lower from plank into your vinyasa, which includes cobra or upward facing dog. And back to downward facing. Once there, inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, gently step the foot forward beside your left thumb and spin your right heel down. Inhale, slowly rise to Virabhadrasana one. Exhale, lower into your vinyasa. Letting your breath pace your body. 
Once again, when you arrive in Adho Mukha Svanasana, let your body be still, steady your gaze or drishti, and cultivate balance as you listen to three deep breaths. When you've emptied the third exhalation, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat, forward folds, with feet touching, inhale, lengthen to half forward fold. Exhale, fold. Knees touching, inhale, sit back into chair, Utkatasana. Exhale, rise, hands together at the heart and mountain pose, Padasana. Practice Surya B one more time. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Step into plank and lower or float gently to Chaturanga. Insert your vinyasa here. From downward, inhale, raise the right leg. Exhale, step it forward, lower the left heel. Inhale, rise, Virabhadrasana one. Exhale into your vinyasa. From downward, inhale, raise your left leg. Exhale the foot forward, lower your right heel. Inhale into Virabhadrasana one. Exhale, lower vinyasa. Pausing and downward for three deep breaths. Feeling your body and what's coming and going through sensations right now. Once you've emptied the third breath, walk or lightly jump to the top of your mat. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale to rise. From here, let's separate the feet hips distance parallel to each other again. Bring your hands to your hips and as you breathe in, roll your shoulders back. As you breathe out, tilt your weight as far forward as you can, hinging from your hips with the feeling of a flat back. So feel free to bend the knees as much as needed. Let's come into Padahastasana, stretching the outer wrists. As you lift the toes, slip your palms face up under the soles of your feet. Try to get your toes to meet the inner creases of your wrists. Then again, shifting your weight forward, breathe in and lift your chest through your upper arms, lengthening the spine as you draw the shoulders back. Keep tilting forward and exhale, bow from your hips, relax your neck, soften the jaw, maybe shake and nod the head a few times for a few deep breaths. Lifting the shoulders up, drop the head down, invite space in your neck. maybe fluttering the lips to relax the jaw. And then plant your fingertips on the floor. Step the ball of your left foot behind you into crescent lunge. So with feet hips width apart, slowly rise to stand. One full cycle of breath here, drawing the tailbone down, lifting through the crown and relaxing the shoulders. Spin your left heel to the ground and align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot as you bend the right knee just on top of the ankle. Open your arms wide and steady your gaze. Just pass your right hand or close your eyes. Warrior two. Listening to about four more deep breaths here as you're hugging your right outer hip in towards you. Firm the top of your left thigh in towards you. Triangle pose, straighten your right leg and glide your hips towards your rear wall, 
lengthening your torso towards your front wall. Place your right hand down on the right side of your right shin on a ground or a block. Raise the left arm up and spiral your chest slightly to face the sky, steadying your gaze on one spot. Keep tacking the right hip crease back towards your left outer foot as you lengthen your crown forward. Let's tune into about four more breaths here in Trikonasana. Can you place more weight on your feet and less weight on your right hand? Half moon pose, gaze at the ground in front of your right foot and plant your right fingertips forward and to the right of it. Drag your left foot forward and flex it off the ground, turning your chest to face the left wall, just like triangle pose. Landing your eyes, another four deep breaths in Ardha Chandrasana. So you'll notice that these three standing postures all have that external rotation of your right thigh bone at the hip. Left leg is slightly internally rotated. On your next exhale, lower the left arm overhead beside the right hand and rotate your left outer hip to face the ground, coming into standing splits. To so tack your right outer hip back, level out your hips, and as you're still flexing the left foot, raise the left leg from the inseam and draw your chest forward on an in-breath. Little by little, folding towards your right shin, you might play with challenging your balance by walking your hands closer to your right foot, maybe holding the ankle or the calf with one or both hands. Relax, back of your neck, soften your eyes, about three more deep breaths. Uttanasana, step the left foot to meet the right, forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, plant your fingertips, step the ball of your right foot back into a high lunge. Then inhale, rise up, crescent pose. So as you draw the tailbone down, lift your frontal hip bones. Spinning your right heel down, align left heel to intersect the arch of your right foot, bending the left knee right on top of the heel. Open the arms, steady your gaze, just pass your left hand or close your eyes. Vira Bhadrasana two, about four more deep breaths. So here, as your left thigh is externally rotated, hug the outer hip in towards you. As your right thigh is slightly internally rotated, firm the top of it towards you. Triangle pose, straighten your left leg, slide your hips towards the rear wall and lengthen your torso towards the front. Plant your left fingertips on the ground or a block just to the left of your left shin Turning your gaze possibly up towards the right hand, if it feels okay on your neck, as you turn your chest slightly towards the sky. Trikonasana. See if you might be able to lengthen the left underside of your torso here, drawing the left hip further back and lengthening your spine further forward. Last two breaths. Half moon pose, gaze ahead of your left foot, plant the left fingertips upper left corner from it and drag your right foot forward, flexing it off the floor. Here in the air, we create the shape of triangle pose. Land your gaze, tune into about four more slow breaths. What's coming and going here for you to notice within body, mind, or breath?
Sweep the right arm overhead, land the right hand beside the left. Standing splits, rotate your right outer hip to face the ground as you flex the right foot. Raising the right leg from the inseam behind you, inhale, lift your chest forward. And start to bow towards your left shin, maybe walking the hands closer to your left foot, maybe holding the ankle or the calf. Let your head relax downward. Uttanasana, step the right foot to meet the left at the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen forward. This time, step or float into a vinyasa or step into cat-cow a few times. Welcoming that long, slow flow of breath. From Adho Mukha Svanasana, inhale, raise your right leg behind you. As you exhale, bend the knee and externally rotate your right thigh at the hip. Staying here, inhale, tack your left hip back. As you exhale, cross your right knee to touch, left elbow, balancing both shoulders right above your wrists. Step the right foot to meet the right thumb and lower your left knee, rising into Anjaneyasana, kneeling lunge. So with your legs hips width apart, your left hip right above the left knee and your right knee right above your right ankle, let's prepare for a twisting lunge or Parita Parjvakanasana. Use your right hand to cup the top of your right thigh, firming that right leg still. Inhale, lengthen your spine down the midline of your mat. Keeping your pelvis still, exhale, twist to your right and either lower your left hand on the floor or a block inside of your right leg, raising the right arm up or hook your left elbow outside of your right thigh where you can either join your hands in prayer, open your arms apart or bind. You could also choose to lift the back knee off the ground, coming onto the ball of your left foot. Keep your hips squared or even in height so that you're twisting just beneath your bottom ribs. If you're hooking the elbow outside of your thigh, draw your belly inward towards the spine. Rather than leaning the belly on your right thigh, can you lift the belly away from it as you continue to twist? Three more breaths. Look at your right foot, place your hands down on blocks of the floor to frame it and lower your left knee again. So it's right under your left hip, half or full split. Lift the ball of your right foot flexed and feel free to use blocks under your hands here to prevent rounding the shoulders, rounding the back. You wanna create the feeling of a slight lift in the chest as you firm in the belly. So as you're flexing your right foot, press the big toe mound forward, engage your right quadricep. As you plug the right thigh bone back deeper into the hip socket towards straightening the leg, lengthen your chest forward, draw the shoulders down your back, breath by breath, folding from your hips. And if it's available, Tucking the left toes and beginning to slide the right heel forward little by little where you're still balancing both hips to face forward. You might also place a block under your right thigh and use your hands to square the hips. Maybe raise the arms overhead. Maybe you lower all the way down. Just seeing what's available for about four or five more deep breaths. Now take your time transitioning back to downward facing dog. Plant your hands on the ground, slowly drag the right heel towards you. Steady breath, optional vinyasa before you get to downward dog.
Sense the breath in and empty it just as slowly. Inhale, raise your left leg back. Exhale, bend the knee, turn open your left thigh at the hip. Stay there as you inhale, tack right outer hip back. Then exhale, cross the left knee to touch right elbow as you balance both shoulders above your wrists. Step the left foot lightly beside left thumb and lower the right knee, inhale to rise. Kneeling lunge. So having your right hip directly above your right knee and your left knee directly above your left heel can create a solid foundation. Then bring the feeling as if you're dragging the legs towards each other so it's stable beneath you. Then cup the top of your left thigh with your left hand and inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Exhale, twist across your waistline to the left. See if you can enter the same version of the twist as you did on the first side. Right hand on a block of the floor inside of the leg, left arm up, or hook the right elbow outside of the thigh, join the hands in prayer, open the arms, or bind. With the option of lifting the back knee into a high lunge. Remember to keep your hips leveled, not twisting at the pelvis, but rather twisting at your waist. Shoulder blades down the back. Tuning into about four more slow breaths here in this variation of twisting side angle pose. Harita Parjvakanasana. Staying in your twist, gaze at your left foot and either on blocks of the floor, or land your hands to frame it. Set your right knee down directly under the right hip. Let's prepare for half or full Hanumanasana. Lift the ball of your left foot flex, pressing the big toe mound forward. Plug your left thigh bone back deeper into your hip socket towards straightening the leg. As you lengthen your torso forward, drawing the shoulders down your back. Keep a slight lift in your chest as you hug the belly in, breath by breath, hinging from your hips. And if available here, maybe tucking your right toes to help keep your hips squared as you gently slide the left heel forward. Maybe placing a block under your left hamstring to free up your hands to guide the hips squared or to raise the arms overhead to clasp, accept the index, a mudra that represents victory. Sensing your victorious breathing at the same time, maybe coming down to sit in Hanumanasana. About four more deep breaths where you are. Take your time to transition either into a vinyasa first or directly to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, walk your hands back to meet your feet clasping your big toes. Feel free to bend the knees if that allows more reach. Inhale, lengthen your torso forward and tilting your weight forward, hinge from the hips, bow in, relax your neck and jaw. Lift the shoulders away from them. Deep inhale through the nose, open the mouth wide and feel free to release any sound. Simasana pranayama. <sighs> Lion's breath. <sighs> and then unclasp the big toes, heel toe your feet apart wider than hips distance. And let's prepare for a squat. You might use blocks to stack so that you can sit on them, or you might feel comfortable hovering the pelvis off the ground. But first, from your hip sockets, externally rotate both thighs, bending the knees. So they're pointing in the same direction as your toes beneath. Now, you might use your arms or your elbows to help splay open your inner thighs. Let the pelvis feel heavy as you lift up through your chest and the back of your skull, maybe bringing the hands in prayer. 
Tuning into a few deep breaths here in Malasana. Pressing down to your feet, imagine lifting your pelvic floor as you inhale to rise up. All right, let's set the blocks on their tallest height at the top of your mat, shoulders width apart, and step behind the blocks about a foot with feet together touching. Join your hands in prayer and steady your gaze just ahead on one spot. Steady your breathing and cultivate the feeling of balance. Bending your knees together, begin in chair, then externally rotate your right thigh at the hip. As you flex your right foot, cross the right ankle over the left thigh, splaying the right thigh open. Draw your sitting bones back and down. To whatever degree you can sink the hips, you might raise the arms overhead, you might place your hands on the blocks, or you might prepare for an arm balance of flying single pigeon pose. If you're going to flying pigeon, plant your hands flat on the floor about a foot in front of the left toes. Think of your arms going from plank to chaturanga. Keep them parallel. Use the top of your right flex foot to wrap around the left upper arm like a clasp. Look ahead of your fingertips and shift your weight forward as you bend the elbows back, placing your right shin across your upper arms as you make a shelf out of them. Tilting the weight forward, you might extend the left leg back. A few more deep breaths. Then eventually back to figure four, chair pose, and from there, slowly rising up to stand in mountain pose. Deep breath in, cleanse it out. And with feet together touching, let's prepare for side two. Bend your knees in chair, turn open the left thigh at the hip, flex your left foot and cross the ankle over right thigh, splaying the left thigh open, try to evenly draw both sitting bones back. Notice what's available on the side. You might raise the arms, place them on blocks, or plant the hands on the floor moving towards the arm balance. If the arm balance, clasp the top of your left foot around the right upper arm, and as your left shin presses off your upper arms, draw the navel in, extending the right leg back. Let's return to figure four chair pose and rise up to Padasana. Sensing the breath coming and going, just like the poses coming and going. Sense the natural presence that is you. Let's make our way down to our knees. We're going to prepare for our last few back bends by first opening up the hip flexors and quadriceps. So start in hero's pose, Virasana. If that is okay with your body, you can sit either on your calves, you can sit on a block between your ankles. Make sure that your feet are neither turned out or turned in, your toes are pointing directly back. Some of you might find it comfortable to sit between the ankles on the floor like this. Have your knees no wider apart than hips distance and keep them on the floor as you seal in the front ribs to whatever degree your body is willing without straining, start to lean back into Supta Virasana, supine hero's pose to prevent overarching and compressing the lower back. As you lean the torso back, direct your tailbone down and forward. Continue to seal in the bottom of your front ribs. If you're lying all the way back, maybe on props or the floor, you might raise your arms overhead and hold opposite elbows. Let's tune into at least five more slow breaths. Just 
start to slowly rise, coming down to all fours or plank pose. And on your own, slowly descending to your belly, lying face down, entering our first of a few last back bends, beginning in bow, Dhanurasana. So as you rest your forehead on the ground, slide your knees close together and bending them, catch with your hands, your inner or outer feet or ankles. Press your pubic bone into the ground as you kick your feet into your hands, lifting your legs high off the ground, knees no wider than hips distance. Draw your shoulder heads back, lengthen the back of your neck, and then count a total of about five breaths before you let go to rest. Let your body be still as you rest for three breaths. Notice what you're aware of here. One more bow pose. Slide the knees close together and catch inner or outer feet or ankles. If you have your ankles, it might help to flex your feet. When you're ready, lift up for five or more breaths. Relaxing in stillness for three breaths. And then slowly make your way onto your back for our last active back bend, either in bridge or upward facing bow. You might choose to hug a block by the skinny width between knees and thighs to stabilize the lower back. Feet about hips width apart, parallel the feet, parallel the thighs. Bring the arms down by your sides and have your heels just close enough where you could almost touch them with your fingertips. Ground your shoulders and lift the hips for bridge. Slide the upper arms underneath, maybe clasp the hands. For upward bow or Urdhva Dhanurasana, hands alongside the ears, only if you normally practice this since we didn't really work up to it. Take your last back bend for five or more deep breaths. Remember to keep your legs parallel to each other. When you're ready, gently lower your back to the ground. Drop the knees apart and soup the Konasana. Bring the soles of your feet together and maybe rest a hand to the heart, a hand to the belly and close the eyes for at least three longer exhalations. Breathe in for five counts, breathe out for seven counts. Bring your hands to your outer thighs, closing the knees. Make your way up to sit for a seated twist. Extend your left leg in front of you and step your right foot on the ground, either in front of your right hip or crossed outside of your left knee, in which you might also bend the left knee. As long as you can evenly ground your two sitting bones and sit tall with the shoulders relaxed. Place the right hand on the floor behind your pelvis and raise the left arm, breathing in, root into the floor and lengthen your spine. Breathing out, begin twisting to your right. Lower your left arm to hold your right leg or hook the elbow outside of that thigh. Let's continue twisting here for about four more deep breaths.
on your exhalation, unwind your spine and let's switch. Extend the right leg forward. Try to set up the same way for this side if you can. Left foot in front of the hip or cross outside the opposite knee. Maybe bend the bottom knee. Left hand behind your pelvis, right arm up, sit tall as you breathe in. Twist to your left as you breathe out, either holding your left leg or hooking the right elbow outside of it. On your next exhalation, unwind your spine. And let's come into a cross-legged seat to start with your right leg on top or in front of your left leg. Notice if it's helpful to prop your pelvis on your blocks or a cushion. So we've done quite a bit of external rotation of the thighs and worked with the hip flexors in different ways, preparing for possibly moving into lotus pose. And lotus pose only if your knees feel okay with it, right? Really important when we're turning out the legs, not to turn from the knees sideways. So begin with the right leg, turning it out and placing it in front of the left leg if that's available. If that's available and you're sitting cross-legged like this, you might bring that left, excuse me, that right ankle towards the hip crease of your left leg, right towards the hip crease. And then you can stay here. This is half locus, right ankle on left hip crease. If it's available, take it very gently, stay with the breath. You take the bottom ankle and place it over the right thigh so that left ankle touches the right hip crease. Here's Lotus Pose. Again, make sure your knees feel okay with it and you're transitioning very slowly with the breath. In Lotus Pose, you could stay here and sit for a few breaths or there's an option for a forward fold, perhaps with a bind. Forward fold, you can start to bow forward, making sure your pelvis stays on the floor. For the bind, bring your left arm behind your back and with your peace fingers, clasp your left big toe. Bring your right arm behind your back and with your peace fingers clasp your right big toe. Then inhale, lengthen the spine and exhale, begin to fold in, breath by breath. Press down to your pelvis and breathe in, lifting from your heart center, slowly rise. Be mindful with transitioning, lifting the top ankle slowly and unwinding both legs straight. Take a moment to stretch the legs forward and dundas in a stick pose. You might circle your feet at the ankles because this can also be a pretty deep stretch on the ankles. Deep breaths. So Lotus Pose is the traditional posture for meditation and it's not always attainable especially if you haven't been doing a lot to prepare your body for it all right let's start with the left leg this time crossing left ankle towards right hip crease you could bend the right knee and place the ankle under you and that's half lo locus lotus half lotus like the flower or be gentle with your right knee, breathe through it, take that right ankle and cross it on top of the left hip crease. Your sitting bones, sit tall and breathe, or start to bow forward, walking the hands forward. If you're going into the bind, wrap your right arm behind you, clasp the big toe with the peace fingers, wrap your left arm behind you, clasp the big toe with the peace fingers. Then inhale, sit tall and exhale, begin to fold. Few deep breaths. And press down to your hips and inhale to slowly rise up. 
Again, be gentle as you transition. Uncross the top leg slowly. Uncross the bottom leg. And one more stick pose. Straighten the leg. Circle out your feet. Slow breath in. Let it go through the mouth. Prepare for one more posture. Seated forward fold. Paschimottanasana. Option to place a strap around the balls of your feet or to raise the arms up. As you're sitting tall, flex your feet. Lengthen the spine as you breathe in. Relax the shoulders. And then exhale little by little hinge from your hips, keeping a slight lift in the chest. If you're not holding a strap, you might walk your hands down the backs of your legs. You might clasp the big toes, avoiding rounding the shoulders or rounding the back. Instead, invite a slight lift in the chest as you draw belly in, lengthening the spine. Four more breaths here in Paschimottanasana. And then rooting down through your hips, breathe in to slowly rise. Let's come into a practice of one more pranayama breathing technique. Continuing with box breathing, samavriti pranayama, a grounding technique, one that helps to calm the nervous system. So sit in a way that you can breathe well, relaxed. You might bring your hands into mudra, one that helps to cultivate an evenness of mind or equanimity, inner balance, is stacking the palms face up on the center of your lap with the thumb tips touching gently. Close your eyes or steady a soft gaze just ahead. This breath work is practiced by closing the lips and breathing in for a slow count of four, holding the breath for a count of four, and breathing out for a slow count of four, and holding the breath for a count of four. For, that's one cycle. Let's practice two cycles together and three cycles on your own. Box breathing, samavriti pranayama. Prepare to begin by emptying this breath. Then inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Second cycle, inhale four, three, two, one. Hold four, three, two, one. Exhale four, three, two, one. Hold four, three, two, one. Continue three more cycles on your own. When you finish, let go to a natural breath pace and sense what you're feeling after that. As you're ready, take your time to gently lower your body to the ground placing it in a comfortable lying down position where you can rest in stillness 
for a few minutes of Shavasana, corpse pose. Eyes closed, breath natural, awareness here in the present. Now, as you continue resting here for a few more moments, become aware of your physical state, how you feel in your body. Then little by little, gently begin to move, starting with small parts of your body Kindly waking it up. Easy stretch here and there. And as you keep your eyes closed, eventually turning over onto your right side and resting your head. As you arrive there, spend a few moments observing the breath in its natural flow. and noticing how your energy has been affected by your practice. And slowly lift your body up, find a comfortable way to sit for five minutes in meditation. I invite you to a continued practice of mindfulness meditation in which you might begin by resting your awareness on something that allows you to connect to the present and anchor, such as the sensation of the natural breath or chanting in your mind, I am loving awareness, really feeling that you are observing all things coming and going. 
And then letting go of that, observe what comes up, either in sensations in the body, sounds you notice around you, emotions or feelings, or thoughts. Noticing how all those are impermanent. And if you start to find your awareness entangled in any of those stimuli, bring yourself back to the present by coming back to your anchor, either the feeling of the breath or mentally chanting, I am loving awareness. Let's practice that. Now bringing your awareness back into your heart center, to your mind. Sense what's present for you now mentally and emotionally. You might gather your palms at your heart center offering gratitude. Anything to offer gratitude for. Thanking yourself for your dedication to your practice by showing up. And then remember what your intention was today.
call to mind to whom or what you dedicated today's practice. Closing together, let's chant again three ohms. Inhale fully. Uh. light in me bows to the light in you namaste